Hey there, it's Angie M. Just wanted to pop on here quickly. I was toying with some ideas and I am winding down and getting some stuff done on the last of some uh, vacation time that I had. I've talked about and I have tried to post my 2020 wants. Unfortunately, it is taking so long to post a 40 minute video that I have tried now posting twice and it won't show up. So shout out to Coca-Cola, zero sugar, caffeine free. I don't get heartburn with this. In case you're wondering, I'm trying to drink more water and I do have my, my ginormous water bottle right here next to me. Oh, I've got, which, oh, this is gonna bug me. So I also bugs you guys too, but it bugs me when stuff does this, when it starts to peel off. And I have a tendency when stuff starts to peel off like stickers to just kind of want to. Oh, 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 it's gonna tear my shit aquarium sticker. All right, that's, that's fine. They're unfortunately getting wet. I didn't think too clearly about the stickers I put on here. So the I Love Penguins from the Shed Aquarium has, has a coating on it that makes it so that if I'm washing this, it doesn't get icky. My Salt Lake City, Utah sticker, unfortunately, the, the protector just peeled off. I've got Camelback Mountain. I was pregnant when I was in Phoenix on a trip and at Camelback Mountain. So I did not climb it. It was also during the warm time of year for them, so I was not going to be dumb and, and attempt it that way, but I did stare at it. It was beautiful. I would love to go back and hike the trails there. I have another Shed Aquarium sticker, and then my Apple sticker and my heart are kind of hidden behind the Penguin sticker. So that is what is on my water bottle. So I've been toying with the idea of a no-buy, and I don't think a no-buy in terms of makeup is going to be something that's my jam. Skincare, I, I'm not gonna lump in so much because I don't have an issue with skincare outside of just trying to find a moisturizer that works for me right now. My skin went from being oily to dry, very dry. I'm gonna drink some more water. I'm also gonna be talking to my doctor, but I think a part of it that is filtering in is the birth control that I'm on. I think it is playing a significant role in some hydration issues that I'm having as well as in some lead cramps and some headaches and some fatigue. Oh, so yeah, that's a whole thing that I, I'm gonna have to address. But uh, I'm thinking low buy for makeup. I'm thinking that replacing things I use as I use it might be the way to go. The reason that I won't do a no buy is because I don't have excess stock of things like mascara. So I already know I'm gonna need to repurchase at least one, if not two to, to make it through the year. But in terms of other things that I accumulate and love, and part of the problem is when I'm depressed or feeling sad, I like to go to Sephora and look at makeup and try new things. I've also been on, on a lip balm adventure, which we will talk about, but I think NARS, cheeky buggers, just, uh, just KO'd that entire argument. I picked up the oil infused lip tint in Primal Instinct from NARS. NARS, don't change this and don't ever get rid of this line. This stuff is just, it's beautiful. It, there's literally nothing else I can say about it. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful on the lips. It's very much a sheer my lips but better color for me. I'm glad I picked it out. I would like it in an orangey red and my life would be set in terms of balms. Like it, it kicked the daylights out of all of the balms that I have been trying that you will see for my balm journey and the balm date series that I have rolling up here uh let's see it's uploading so january 6th is when i'll be talking about that but this guy basically just won i'm not gonna say he won the arms race this guy basically just ended the arms race so absolutely beautiful i love the nars formulas i had been hesitant to try this because silly me i had tried an elf lip oil i know right let's compare nars to elf elf i love you you have a place you have a purpose but again when you start talking about differences in pricing, there's a reason for differences in pricing. At least you hope, you hope, right? You hope you're not being ripped off. And I never feel like I'm being ripped off with NARS products. So that was, was pretty cool. And I love the color. It's not a color I would have gravitated to before, but it reminded me, I've been looking a lot at Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk and some other things that fall along that color line. And this guy is just, it's beautiful. It's glossy, it's gorgeous, it lasts. It's nice, I, I love it. And then I did pick up Pulsion from NARS. 
I think this will be the last gloss. I've wanted this for more than six months. I've wanted this since I think it, it came out and I saw it. Now it might've been out for longer than that, but when I saw it in, in Ulta, and the color might be a little bit distorted because I have warm lighting instead of cool lighting. It's a very, it's a very beautiful pink. It's a very My Lips But Better. I'm wearing it right now. I love it. I can see it whether I'm wearing cool tone, whether I'm wearing warm tone. It just, it works. It's very neutral, very nice, very lovely, very much a more pigmented version of the lip oil. So love these. I, I can't say enough good things about the NARS lip glosses. They are moisturizing in and of themselves. I don't know if NARS says that, if they bill these as being nourishing in any way, but they really are, at least for me. And this is the, yeah, just the lip gloss, lip gloss, blah, 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 lip gloss brilliant in Pulsion. And I'm glad I purchased this. I will wear this daylights out of this and love every single minute of it. So yay for that. And then, and then something that I absolutely had to have, like could not, could not say no to as soon as I saw it, I had to have it. I've been watching YouTubers video it. I went to my local Sephora and I did not see it out. I didn't see it out. Usually they have these guys, I'm gonna show it to you in just a second. Usually they have these guys by the register in those last impulse buys, which don't really get me anymore. Right? If there's something in there that I know I use that's in a mini, I might purchase it in a mini because I find for me minis last. I don't go through a lot of, a lot of product very quickly in terms of, you know, staple stuff. Primers usually last for me because I don't wear foundation, so I only put them where I need them. Um, eyebrow products last for me, all that good stuff. I don't really use eye pencils. I find they look fakey on me, and I think it's because I just haven't found one that's the right shade that works with the shade of my eyebrows versus my hair, and I just, it's, it's not a thing for me. I like my brows, except for this bald spot. I keep building into this one. I did it yesterday, too. It was frustrating. Anyway, I digress. So I didn't see this over by the brand, and I didn't see this at the checkout, and I got some crazy, my hair is, my hair is getting a little floofy over here. It's getting a little crazy. I don't have any oils in it today. My daughter was full on awake when I got up. You'll see my silvers, which the warmer, redder tone of my hair is changing because of the silvers and it makes it look cooler. And that's the whole thing I'm dealing with too. Anyway, digression done. So I had to ask, when I asked the guy, he's like, oh, I don't think we can sell that yet. And I'm like, you're selling it to me because I go to your website and it says it's available in store. And if it says it's available in store on your website, it's available in store. You're not gonna hide it and not sell something that Sephora is is literally selling and I'm watching people go out and buy and do reviews on. Like, no, 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 no. Not, not this girl, not this girl. So he called back to one of the chicks and she's like, yeah, we just don't have the display changed so we didn't have it out yet. And it's like, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Don't tell someone who loves makeup that you don't have something there because I will pull it up on my phone as I'm standing here talking to you and show you that uh, according to, according to Sephora, it's available for me to purchase and give you my money on. So that is the oh ho, ho, High Reflect Natasha Denona Mini Glam Palette. We're gonna open it, we're gonna open it right now. We're gonna give it a little swatch of Rooney. Oh, I fell in love with Natasha Denona with the Metropolis Palette. I really wanted the Biba Palette. I ended up getting the Metropolis Palette and I just, I, I love it, I love it. I love her so much, it's not even funny. And when I saw this guy, it's more cool tone. So it's like, here's warm tone, warm tone, here's neutral, and then we're gonna segue into more cool tones. And over here is cool tones, right? So you've got your neutrals and you have your cool tones. Well, this, this guy is just a little bit to the other side of, of neutral. And the reason I say that is, it doesn't go into what would be traditional cool tones. Lots of grays, lots of weird purples, things I'm never gonna wear on my face. So there's a, a bronzy shade, a shade that I'm gonna say is probably similar to, to Tusk, at least it looks similar to Tusk. A nice chocolate brown, which I'm starting to love. And there's some, some shimmery dudes. And I'm gonna call them by name, I probably should. All right, so I'm pretty sure we've got Golden Flush, Harlow, the center is Anho, Seed, and then Faye. And again, I apologize, my lights are turned down, they're warm tone. So this might just, 
Sorry if you see me. Oh, it's because I'm touching it and it's creamy and it's beautiful and I cannot wait to put this. Oh, that mat is nice. Harlow is nice. Oh. All right. So I have the first four and I'll hit the fifth one in just a second. So do 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 do. That's a light swatch. There's no primer on my hand. Okay, all right, I, I see you there with your pigmentation. Oh, 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 that gold though. Gold and bronze. See, and this is why this got me. Gold and bronze are my thing. Like, I love a good gold and a good bronze. Did you did you see that swatch? Did you, did you, did you, ooh, ooh those are nice. I hope these perform on my eye ah, the way they swatch. But that gold and that bronze, I thought, I thought for sure, not so much the gold. The gold, is that going to be similar to things I already have in my collection? No, she's a little bit more antique than most of the brighter golds that I have. So that's nice. The second shade will be perfect because I am fair and it will show up on me. So it's not like it's going to be a setting shade. It's going to have some pigment to it. I'm just going to wipe off my hand here. Oh. Okay, first swipe to wipe off. Can you do, do, ooh. Come to mama. All right, so I wipe those guys off and then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to pick up this last shade here in Faye. I'm just gonna close that bad boy up so I sit and stare. Faye. When I rub my finger in it, Faye is a little bit chunkier than the other two. Oh, she nice. That's a nice shadow, as my daughter would say. Nice. Things are nice. Nice. I guess my wife said, nice. She's so cute. She's Her words and everything are getting better, and pronunciation are getting better every single day, but she just... She's just a little giggle monster. We love it. So that is not disappointing. So I think I could cut it out on, on eyeshadows. I know, again, if a certain video had posted <laughs> that you'd see, you'd see a Charlotte Tilbury palette that she's coming out with. It's a big, it's a big 12 panner, similar in layout to the holidays. It's the Pillow Talk palette. Sorry, I blanked on that that I am interested in getting, but the more I sit down and look at it, the three pink shades towards the end aren't my jam. I might use them, but I don't see them being a regular thing. I don't have anything quite like them in my collection, so I'm kind of torn on that, but the other shades just seem, they seem similar to things I might already have or could easily dupe. And it's going to probably be a $75 palette. I don't know when it's coming out. Do I see myself picking it up? I, I don't know. I don't know. That might be something that I ask for as a gift. Be like, hey, for my birthday, instead of going out to eat, can you just give me this palette? And go that route. But I think I'm going to try to curtail it on the rest of the stop. I think I think I need to stay away from Sephora. I need to stop looking at their website. I'm going to keep watching beauty YouTubers that I love and, and seeing what's new and, and coming up on their channels because I love that kind of stuff. But I have to... I have to sit down, I have to start KOing the bad habits that really lead to overspending. And that is, for me with makeup, I can rationalize anything. I will purchase anything because I can find a reason. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what that reason is. I can rationalize why I need something when I don't need something. And I want to, I want to stop that. Like I said, skincare isn't, isn't so much of a crush. Fragrance isn't so much of a crush for me. It's, it's makeup, it's, it's eyeshadows, it's lip glosses, lipsticks, lip balms, it's, it's blushes. It's the whole gambit that just, because I want to try things and I want to look for the newer and the better and the biggest and the best. And there's just, there's so much out there that it's really easy to just start picking up a bunch of stuff you're either not going to use or you don't really want. Like this, I, I can see myself using this. I can see myself probably using through this and hitting pan on these. And that's great. I also like it because I have the Metropolis palette that is very warm tone and this is not. So it's it's a departure from that. Now the chocolate shade I put my finger in, is it similar? I know it's it's the same as a shade from the Biba palette. 
I do know that. I have right now in my everyday palette, probably what's supposed to be a dupe for the same brown from the Sahara palette from Alter Ego Cosmetics. Now, I've used that one, I enjoy it. I will use this one the same way and see which is better. And if Natasha Denona is better, I suspect it will be. I, I've heard that there, while the Sahara from Alter Ego and the Alter Ego stuff in general is very good quality for the price range, I would expect Natasha Denona's shadow to probably perform better. Now that said, it might be much more pigmented. And if it's much more pigmented the way I like to use it, it might not be an all the time thing for me, which means that Alter Ego shade from the Sahara palette, I'm probably gonna end up keeping because that one is buildable. It doesn't start out with a wham. Whereas I'm wondering based on the swatch if the Natasha Denona is gonna start out super pigmented and be a little bit more, be a little bit more than I'm prepared for. And as I say that, I just want to give a, I know, I wish I knew how to hold my face better. If someone could teach me, that would be great. I really love a YouTuber picturesque and she just does the most fabulous makeup. And it's, it's not talk tutorials. You get to watch her do it, but she does it in such a way that you can see it. And then she holds her face just, oh, she's like a model and she's so gorgeous. I just, ooh, I love her. I love her stuff. I love the music that she picks for her stuff. I can just turn it on. And zone out but I wanted this is the Charlotte Tilbury easy eye palette and I was inspired to wear it today instead of my everyday palette because I was scrolling through my Facebooks and I realized I wasn't following Charlotte Tilbury when she popped up doing a look with the easy eye palette and she did it and it was so simple and effortless where she was blending you know a, a matte with with one of her more, I don't know if I'm gonna call them metallic, I call them everything sparkly. <laughs> I know that's an improper term, but uh, with one of the shimmer shades, and then she was doing it with, with another two, and I was like, it just looked so gorgeous, and I went, oh, I have that palette, I can emulate that, and you know, I did it this morning, and no, it's not as expert as hers, no, my brushes, my brushes aren't as, probably aren't as great as hers, you know, this is Charlotte Tilbury we're talking about here, but I just, it made me love it that much more to actually see her applying it to her own face and just how gorgeous all of her products looked as she applied them. And as she walked through the best way to apply each product, I was just like, yes. And she applied, she applied it with a brush and I have a love for, and I should probably talk about my Real Techniques brushes that have basically replaced some of my favorite brushes from Sephora. I don't have super, with the exception of my Hourglass blush brush, I don't have any any super expensive brushes. It's never been something that I've seen a need for because what I have performs very well, but I'm starting to see in particular with things like Natasha Denona and Charlotte Tilbury and even my NARS palette, that the brushes that they require and the techniques that they require are so vastly different they're more pigmented, they're richer, the, the blending is, is better and easier and the way they move over the eye surface as you're working with them is so different from other eyeshadows I've had in the past. And the, the big thing I can compare it to is Urban Decay. For years and years and years, the only eyeshadow palettes I had, because to me they felt like, you know, hey big spender at the time, were the Naked 2 and the Naked 3. And those just in comparison to some of the eyeshadows I'm using now today, I don't want to compare it to kids makeup, but that's almost what it feels like for me. It feels like I really loved makeup in high school. Really, 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 really loved it. But dollar store and drugstore stuff was always, it never performed. It never looked good. I could never get it where I wanted. And I'm, you know, I'm looking at magazines or, you know, seeing things on TV and in movies. I'm looking at women who look beautiful and their makeup is flawless. And I'm like, why can't I get that? And as soon as I hit college, where I moved to and where I was, there, there was a Sephora in the mall, like three minutes from, from my college and where I was living. And I just, I started falling in love. And at that time, Bourgeois was, in, in Sephora, and I believe Bourgeois is a French, more dr drugstore brand in France, but here, price, 
price wise is is a little bit more more lower mid range and I, I have a blush that I kid you not, I am trying to find. If, if anyone can tell me where I can get bourgeois that ships to the US, please let me know because there is a blush I want to replace that was my favorite shimmery blush that I absolutely loved. I found Smashbox and Urban Decay and I stayed away from NARS and from some of, you know, I'm gonna highlight NARS in particular because NARS is such a big one to me because of the cost, because this was this was a step up cost. And I'm in college and I'm like, well, if I eat ramen noodles for the next two weeks, I can buy this kind of deal was what I was doing back then. And makeup was always been a priority for me. So I, like I said, I can rationalize and trade just about anything. You know, and I was buying this and to me it was beautiful and it was good and it was it was fabulous. But as I have gotten older, and as I have started in on this, I want to use products that I love to use and I love to pick up and that light me up and that I'm excited when I pull them out of my bag to apply, that I'm finding that I want some of the more expensive brands. And it's not wanting it because it's more expensive or because of the name. I watch the reviews and I see the looks that are created with some of these and compare them with things that might be lesser lesser on the spectrum and I just I'm in a place in my life where you know urban decay no longer jives with me I'm not in my 20s I'm not you know I'm not feeling my my newfound you know total independence and honestly urban decay isn't edgy anymore when when I was in college urban decay was still edgy for me it was it was different and the colors were different and the packaging was different. And I would like, it resonated with 20 year, 20 year old Angie. It doesn't resonate with 37 year old Angie. 37 year old Angie is like, I'm getting ready to turn 38. I'm staring down at 40. I want the products from Nordstrom's, you know, I want, I, my tastes have changed. And if I spend a little bit more to get a product, that is higher quality and is going to give me what I'm looking for, I'm down for that. I'm down for that all day long. I, I'm not uh, not exactly to the true luxe brands, the true, 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 true high-end, be-all, end-all brands. I'm not purchasing La Prairie or La Mer anytime soon. Believe me, I was growing through on Facebook, looking at it, not Facebook, on, on Sephora. I was talking to my husband about moisturizers and things I was looking for. And I was like, you want to know the most expensive moisturizer on Sephora? And I told him, and he looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, I'm not buying it because I'm not crazy. And at the same time, there's a part of me that's like, well, if I bought La Mer, I might love it. It might, it might do exactly what I want and be the best purchase I've ever made. Is it something that I want to purchase every month or every two months? Or what does that do to my budget? What is that? What does that mean I can't spend my money on now because my money is going there? So my income doesn't match those ranges in terms of how often you probably go through some, some of those products. Makeup is a little different. Makeup is a little different because makeup lasts. You know, someone someone got me some Guerlain meteorites. I probably wouldn't say no. I'd probably like, I'll... I'll get like five years use out of that because I'm not going to go through it all that quickly. But when it comes to stuff that's more staple stuff, you know, I, you gotta kind of, you gotta kind of be a little bit reasonable there. And I just, yeah, I just, Natasha Denona, like she's got me like some, someday, someday the Biba palette and the other palettes don't so much resonate with me, but the Biba palette is right up my alley. You know, I, Charlotte Tilbury, God, Charlotte, honey, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta have a talk over coffee sometime because your products, like the, your, even your pet, your packaging, your products, they draw me in. They're beautiful. They're gorgeous. They make me want to buy them. I do. I am interested in the pillow talk lip gloss. I did not, funny, at my Sephora, I did not see, I'm gonna call it the everlasting. I know that's not what it is. And I'm filming with my phone, so I can't pull up my phone. But they're they're tawny nude. I did not I did not see that. And had I saw it, I probably would have wanted to buy it. But I, I didn't even see it. So that one, I'm gonna make a deal with myself on that because I right now have three lip glosses that look probably very much like that tawny nude. 
I have two from Bite, Salted Caramel and Dirty Chai, which are right there in the color house. And then my Laura Geller lip gloss. The Laura Geller lip gloss, I'm not overly excited to go through, but I do know that it is the gloss I could go through the quickest because the formula, to it, two weeks to a month is all it takes to go through one of her glosses. But I also want the two bite out of, because I think, those, I think those lines are being discontinued and I think I want those out of my collection. I'm halfway through Salted Caramel. I'm a third of the way through Dirty Chai. Yeah, I think I think the two from Bite have to go out of my collection and I can get the Charlotte Tilbury Shawnee Nude. Shawnee Nude. Tawny Nude. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think that's I think that is where I'm at. And I think that's where I'm gonna cut this video. I I'm going to do a low buy, and how I'm going to set this up is as I use things up, that's when something can, new can come into my collection. In terms of eyeshadows. A Charlotte Tilbury, like I said, I think that's going to have to be a gift. I think I'm going to have to, t I, when it comes out, I'm going to have to tell my husband. Hopefully it comes out around my birthday. I'm going to have to tell my husband this. Go into Sephora. Show this picture. Show this picture to the dude wearing makeup that's always standing up front. Because there, it, it always is a dude. Or to the dude. I don't want to say he's in his 40s because I don't want to be wrong. But there's, there's, there's a gentleman there who always has flawless makeup. But he's not in his 20s. He's not, he's not, he's not a young dude. He, he looks seasoned. He looks like he knows what he's doing. And there's a part of me that's like, dude, are you a makeup artist? Like, what are you doing in Sephora? Because he always reminds me of somebody that I hope has a YouTube channel that I see at some point and can, and can subscribe and like. Because dude knows his stuff. And I wish I knew his name. I'm awful with names. So I am so, like, if I saw him, I would recognize him. I, I don't know his name. But he is fabulous. And he has been there when I have returned some stuff. We have talked about products that work, products that don't. He, like I said, he knows, he knows his stuff. So there, there are two kinds of employees at Sephora. This is what I've boiled it down to. Now, please don't be offended if you work at Sephora. This may, may or may not apply to you. And this is my personal opinion, but there are two different kinds of employees at Sephora. People who are truly passionate about makeup and like you want to hire on the side to follow you around and do your makeup because they know what they're doing. Like they are just you don't know why they're at Sephora, but they're at Sephora and you're, you're, you're hoping it's just a discount while they beef up their kit because they are so spectacularly talented. And then you have the people whose aspiration is to go work at Mac, who don't seem to know the products, don't seem to know the difference between someone in their 20s, someone in their 30s, someone in their 40s, someone in their 50s, and the differing skin needs. That gets frustrating to me. You know, and, and and maybe they're maybe they're newer, maybe they're learning. Hey, that's that's all right. You can have fabulous makeup and still be learning stuff. But it just seems like there are two. It just seems like you can break the employees at Sephora, at least at my Sephora, down into two categories. And the gentleman who knows what he's doing, like like show him that. She's like, this is for my wife. My my wife sent me for this, and if I don't leave with this, she's going to hurt me. That's what I think I might do. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to just talk about some makeup. I got some deeper discussions coming. I wanna talk about some YouTubers that I love because I just wanna give a shout out. Uh, if you are interested and you're wondering like, oh, she's brand new, she's, you know, yes, I am brand new to YouTube, but I've got a life by NGM over on the Facebooks and that's where I have been putting content for years. It's more essential oil driven. I am going to be putting up some essential oil content here too, but it is not going to be my main focus. And full disclosure, I am a wellness advocate with doTERRA. You purchase from me, I make money. And I'm just gonna say it shamelessly because quite frankly, if you're not doing something to hopefully someday turn it into an income generating activity, why are you doing it? Right, this is this is a hobby. This is for for me right now. I don't make any money. I don't have any. I think I'm my only subscriber right now. So, like like troll me. You can subscribe and troll me. I might not, I might not even block you. I might just laugh and get a kick out of your comments because odds are I'm gonna hear things that I have I've heard it before. So it's gonna be fine. But I just you know as I sit down and think about it, it's like. How, how many how many people kind of come out of left field and like I want to try something new and I wanted to try posting to the YouTubes 
because posting at Facebook was, it was a little bit more difficult and quite frankly, the things I wanted to do are more, are more geared towards being in the YouTube space as opposed to being in the Facebook space. I have an Instagram. I don't Instagram. I never post to Instagram. I have followers on Instagram and don't know why. I, I think people just follow because they, they like something they see. So if you're, if you're an Instagram follower of mine, I'm gonna apologize. I'm, I'm horrible with Instagram. I'm a bad millennial in that aspect. But uh, I'm gonna call it. I'm just looking around in case I had notes or something else I wanna talk about. I have a cat laying by me right now in case you didn't hear, hear her kinda scratching at my chair. I'm gonna get on to some other things, get on to some more posting, some more uploading. I am working through my schedule of things to post and things to talk about, planning on making some videos, getting some stuff up. You're not necessarily gonna see things real time because I am trying to, I am trying to film out basically because of how long it takes for me to transfer this, put a title card on it and get it uploaded. So <laughs> I gotta kinda, I gotta work smarter, not harder. But uh, have yourself a wonderful one and I will see you in the future.